Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. Friends, in this video we are going to talk about human brain anatomy in easy way. First we need to understand that the brain is present in a hard covering called cranium. It completely develops by the age of 6. Brain weighs around 1.5 kg. The cranial capacity is around 1300 to 1500 cc. Brain has 30 billion neurons. It is soft whitish in nature. It simply means that the structural and functional unit of nervous system is neuron. The cells which never divide. Why? Because it has no centrioles. Let's see some other characteristic. It is ectodermal in origin, mid dorsal and hollow, made up of gray matter and white matter. What is gray matter? It has cyton and non-medulated nerve fiber. What is white matter? It has exon and medulated nerve fiber. So for gray matter remember G, C, N and for white matter remember W, A, M. So in this way you can remember G, C, N and W, A, M as gray matter and white matter. Let's see the parts of the brain. Human brain consists of three parts, forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain. When we talk about human brain, it is also called as encephalon. Encephalon means what? En means in, cephalon means the cranium. So it is present inside the cranium. Forebrain is also called as prosencephalon. Midbrain is called as mesencephalon. And hindbrain is called as rhombencephalon. Forebrain is divided into three parts, olfactory lobes, cerebrum and diencephalon. Olfactory lobe is also called as rhinencephalon, cerebrum is also called as telencephalon, diencephalon is also called as thalamencephalon. Midbrain is divided into two parts, corpora quadrigemina and crura cerebri. Corpora quadrigemina is called as colliculi and crura cerebri is called as cerebral peduncle. The hindbrain is divided into three parts, cerebellum, pons veroli and the medulla oblongata. Cerebellum is also known as metencephalon, whereas the pons veruli and medulla oblongata, they are called as myelinencephalon because the medulla oblongata is going to extend as the spinal cord, which is also called as myelon. So this is how you can remember the entire parts of the human brain. Let's see the structure of the human brain first. This is how human brain look alike. It's a model of brain that I have used to explain the structure. The big portion that you can see is logically called as cerebrum. So when you look at the brain, it's one of the most beautiful organ of our body to give you most intelligence and make you wise animal. Look at this big portion. The big portion of the brain is called as cerebrum. Now when you look at this cerebrum, we need to understand each and every parts of the cerebrum in detail. First, let's start with cerebrum. When you say cerebrum, it is the largest part of the brain. 80 to 85 percent of the total brain is cerebrum. And this cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres. Most important part you need to understand that cerebrum is not at all a single unit. It is divided into two halves. Can you see this vertical line? This median line is called as longitudinal groove or fissure. Now this fissure divides the cerebrum in two equal halves. So this median line is longitudinal groove or longitudinal fissure. So whatever we do from right side is coordinated by left hemisphere of the brain and from left side it is coordinated by right hemisphere of the brain. The outer region of the cerebrum is called as cortex which is made up of gray matter and the inner region of the cerebrum is medulla which is made up of white matter. In spinal cord it is totally opposite. When you look at this cerebrum, we need to understand there is a thick band of nerves called as corpus callosum. This is the corpus callosum which connects the two cerebral hemisphere and the point of contact where the right and the left nerve cross over each other and the meet is called as optic 
chiasma which is optic nerve traveling from right side to the left side so whatever we do from right side of a body the information goes to the left hemisphere of the cerebrum and whatever we do from left side of the body information goes to the right side of the cerebrum and both these are joined by corpus callosum now we need to understand one most important thing that is called as sulci and gyri sometimes it has been misinterpreted that the size of the brain decides the intelligence no friends it's not can you see these depressions these folds these are all called as sulci and gyri the sulci and gyri will decide the intelligence of the person sulci is the depression and the gyri is the fold so what we need to understand it is not the size of the brain it is the number of sulci and gyri that decides the intelligence of the brain now these all folds that you can see actually they are divided into different lobes so all these lobes we need to understand because each lobe has different function so let's see the various lobes of cerebrum frontal lobe the upper one is parietal lobe the behind is called as occipital lobe and on the side what we have is this temporal lobe so let's take a diagrammatic look to understand frontal lobe this is the parietal lobe this is the occipital lobe and the side one is temporal lobe what are the functions of these lobes frontal lobe is mostly meant for thinking memory motivation attention it has motor speech area that is broca's area the parietal lobe is responsible for all motor actions that we do all the actions and the gestures that we do with our hand is parietal lobe it is for touch temperature pressure occipital lobe is for vision whenever we are able to see it is only because of occipital lobe when i talk about the temporal lobe the temporal lobe is responsible mainly for hearing so perception and recognition of hearing is for temporal lobe let's understand the different sulcus because the frontal and parietal lobe is divided by central sulcus the parietal and the occipital lobe is divided by parieto occipital sulcus where the parietal and the temporal lobe is divided by lateral sulcus so these are the various sulcus in the brain let's talk about the most important part that is hypothalamus so hypothalamus is logically present somewhere in the diencephalon part it is below you can say the thalamus region and this hypothalamus consists of a stalk the stalk is called as infundibulum and in this stalk you are going to have the pituitary gland and this pituitary gland is called as the master gland even though it is the master gland itself it is in the control of hypothalamus so this becomes a region of hypothalamus now let's focus on cerebellum the second largest part of the brain 10 to 15% of the total brain is the cerebellum again it is divided into two hemispheres as you can see from the back portion it is divided into two parts but when you look at the cerebellum from inside what you see it is divided into three lobes the median vermis the true lateral hemispheres and what you see as a white line leaf like structure is called as arbor vitae or tree of life the main function of cerebellum is maintaining equilibrium while walking while talking while running while jumping so it is for equilibrium and the posture because of this we are able to walk properly but the person who is drunk who has taken alcohol is not able to walk properly because the cerebellum becomes non responsive or it becomes non functional as you can see here the man who is drunk is not able to walk properly so this is the most important part of the brain that is cerebellum which is responsible for equilibrium while walking running and jumping let's talk about the pons veruli the pons veruli is the lower portion of the brain it is present below the cerebrum above the medulla oblongata when you look at this it is divided into two parts now all the nerves basically passes through the pons veruli this swollen area is called as pons veruli and this pons veruli has most important reflex that is for breathing the pons veruli has outer as white matter and inner as gray matter so this is the pons veruli which controls the activities of cerebral hemisphere now going for the next important part of the brain that is called as medulla 
oblongata. Now, medulla oblongata is considered as the most important part of the brain. Why? Because uh, it controls all the involuntary functions like circulation, respiration, digestion, all the involuntary functions. A small injury or a sudden injury to the medulla oblongata can result in the death of the person. So, medulla oblongata is the most important part which extends as the spinal cord. So, this is all about brain in a very simplest way. Hope friends you have enjoyed the video. Friends do give a like if this video has helped you a lot and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you very much.